Buying a new driver is fantastic fun, and I am not here to deprive anyone of that. However, if you are gonna go new, there are several pitfalls that you might wanna consider and potentially look at the second-hand market. Here is the Golf Bidder website, and I've pulled up a Cobra F9 driver from a few years ago. Now, even then, it undercut most of the competition in price, but not performance. And now look at it. What an absolute bargain. And the performance of this club is still gonna be just as good as it was when it was released. You see, what happens with drivers is they depreciate in value very quickly, and yet the performance really doesn't change that much. Let's take the example of a driver that was released about 10 years ago. Here we have the performance when it was released and the price. Even though the price reduces, the actual performance doesn't change. It's not gotten any worse of a club within that time period. It's just the price which has dropped. That is presuming that there's no sky marks or chunks out of the face or snapped shafts. If we have a look just for a moment at global economics, because that I know is what everybody wants to do, you will notice that prices for drivers above the board have gone up as inflation has increased. They are just getting more and more expensive. And in reality, people's money isn't stretching as far. So it becomes that issue of, if you're gonna get a new driver, is it worth it as those prices tend to increase? Now, this is the new tailor-made driver, the Stealth 2 Plus, and I must admit, I absolutely love it. However, within the new tailor-made releases, there is this driver and two other main models. Now, if you contrast that with the tailor-made drivers from the last five years, look at the difference in choice that you have. And there's nothing to say that the performance of those older drivers is actually any worse than the performance of the newer ones. So if you pick a brand new club, you're actually limiting the choices that you have. However, there are some issues when you get secondhand clubs when compared to new. For example, drivers are usually the clubs that get dinked up the quickest. That is because golf gods are capricious, really nasty people. Please tell me everyone saw that drive, right? Best drive of my life. And getting a new driver is actually one of those really fun experiences that you can have within golf. That excitement of going to the fitting, the excitement of the order, when it arrives, that first shot that you have with it, it's really cool. Also, when you buy second hand, there's no chance of that personalized fitting of getting that club which is really custom made for you. What is happening to me with this driver? It's absolutely flying through the air. Oh my God. Also with second-hand clubs, there's not that many chances where you can try it before you buy it. And depending on the age of the driver, you may be missing out on some of the technical advances that have happened within this area of the bag. I mean, there's no doubt that driver technology over the last 10, 15 years has moved on even if it is just incrementally. Now, as much as I absolutely adore my driver, within this year, there have been a couple of problems. The face has popped out and I've had to have it replaced. Now, TaylorMade have very kindly just sent me new ones, but if you bought this from a shop new, it would still be under warranty. So you could take it back and get it replaced if anything like that happened to your new driver. If you buy second hand, chances are that warranty is gone. If you break it, you ain't gonna be able to replace it. Price is not always a guarantee of how good a driver will be. Just because it's really expensive doesn't mean that it's gonna be good for your game. That swing, for example, would not benefit from a 50 pound driver, never mind something that costs 500. In all seriousness, a new driver can set you back about 650 pounds when there's actually probably something out there for half that price that could do just a good of a job. And also you can take that money that you've saved, reinvest that in lessons and actually become a better golfer overall. Something to be aware of as well is different brands have wildly different prices and this isn't always about performance. A classic example of this, if you think about PXG five years ago, hugely expensive golf clubs that were pretty decent. Now, the price of those clubs has dropped dramatically and actually I would say 
they perform even better than those older, more expensive models. Probably the best example I can give here as far as drivers are concerned, you have the Homme Beres. Now this is one of the most expensive drivers in the world and it's not because it performs any better, it's because it's got gold on it and other fancy things where next to it, you've got drivers here which are better, in my opinion, than the Hummer and cost less. This isn't a price guarantee. If you go expensive, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get the best product for you. If you get a new driver, make sure you have a fitting. The wand chooses the wizard. Classic example really is would you buy shoes that are too big for you? I've been very lucky to have some incredible fittings over the time that I've been doing YouTube. But for you guys, the actual availability of good fitters out there now has exponentially increased within the last five years, using launch monitors and expertise to get the best club for you and your game. If a fitting improves your driver performance by a single yard, you will gain thousands of yards over the course of your time with the club. A fitting adds value to your game, but like a fitted suit, nobody else. Apart from your twin, maybe. <laughs> now, just because a Tour Pro is using a golf club, that does not mean that it is the best for you, or in fairness, it doesn't even mean that's the best club for them. This does happen if you think about Rory with his new stealth versus his old stealth. If you think about Bryson with his whole Cobra debacle, and no offense, like these are the very best players in the world. Why do you think that you should be using the clubs that they are? You are just not as talented a golfer as some of the best players in the world. And I gave lessons for many years, and honestly, even really good golfers mostly would benefit from a forgiving driver rather than the very selected models that tour pros use. Let's face it, we don't spend the majority of our time hitting the ball from the center of the club. There is a reason that ping drivers are so popular with regular golfers and are very much some of the very best selling every single year. It's because they're forgiving. And it's that forgiveness on the off center hits that a lot of golfers really do need. Now, a lot of golfers love certain brands and I am not here to take away your favorite toys. For example, I really like using tailor-made drives and I have done for a number of years, but if I wasn't chasing naughty distance, there are several other clubs which I probably may put in the bag which would give me a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more forgiveness. A great example of this is Wilson. Now, this is a company that lost their way with the driver. However, when I reviewed the new Dynapower, I was absolutely blown away. And it's that stigma which has actually made a lot of people not want to test this new club that could actually stop you trying out a club which is absolutely fantastic. So if you've never seen yourself as a ping person or a Shrixen person, maybe it's time that changes. Have a look at all the options out there. There isn't a single brand which now makes a bad driver. Even Mizuno makes good drivers. Mizuno. Like the world has gone truly crazy. So when you're selecting a driver, you need to know of the different designs to best suit you and what you want to try and achieve. For example, there are now mini drivers. Tommy Fleetwood has one in the bag, just helps him find a few more fairways, a smaller head. They actually feel really nice. There are anti-slice drivers. That's where the club face is a little bit more closed at address than it normally would do. I have seen those drivers help a slicer reduce the overall amount of curvature in the air. There are high launch drivers, so if you struggle to get the ball up into the air, these can allow a little bit more launch at the point of impact. These things within a driver design can make small differences. However, I do have a little bit of bad news. Okay, Roland. All right, okay, so new clubs isn't gonna solve you as a good golfer. Real talk, if you've just been into a pro shop and spent an exorbitant amount of money on a new driver to try and improve your game, I've got some bad news. At the core, you're still gonna be the same golfer. It is not gonna make you play better. I'm sorry to be the bearer of this bad news. Okay.
Exactly. 